you know, I've been in a loving, committed relationship for I don't know, 16, 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. You've got three kids. Um, and you have found a lot of fulfillment in the richness of living, not just in making money and the career and the success and the fame. Yeah. It's one of the things I respect about you. It's one of the things me and Martha were talking about this morning, about how you, you know, you, you could have had, you could have been the bachelor forever. Yeah. Where do you think your life would have been in that year mm -hmm. had you not had the loving, committed relationship, child as well, mm -hmm. first child? Mm -hmm. Where do you think temptation would have led you or do you think you would have made the same decision with the sand on the ground? Or was it having a committed, conscious, mm -hmm. loving relationship and partner and teammate that allowed you to have the courage to act with that line in the sand? Well, and the only reason I pause here is because I'm trying to wonder how <laughs> little of credit to give the relationship. Because I'm not going to say it's 100%, but it's up there. The relationship, having her and be now about to become a father, which was the only thing I ever wanted to be, had great resonance for me. I, one, had a relationship which gave me, just singularly with Camilla, gave me more the license and courage to fly, but now I'm going to become immortal, so to speak, with a child coming into the world. Right. It's the one thing I ever dreamed of being, become a father. That's was at the top of my list since I was a kid. Now I'm like, well, this is what I'm doing. This part of life is always taking precedent before anything I did since got famous, won this or won that. My career was always in front of uh, a Hollywood career, always. That's what I mean by Jake, JK living. That's why Jake just keep living has always been sort of a mantra. What at the end of the day, they argue with that. At the end of the day, that wins out. I've always wanted to have a life that I'm leaving first. And I became an actor mm -hmm. and a movie star and famous, yeah. but not, oh, I'm an actor, movie star and famous. So now what do I do? How do I live my life according to that? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't want to keep those in right. order. If you didn't have that relationship at that time, where do you, what do you think would have happened? That's a good question. What would have happened? Um, you think it would have been more tempting to take the money and st let me just. I yeah, mean, I been? mean, yeah, the nights would have been even longer. Uh, the, 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 I think it would have definitely got more wobbly. Mm. I would have really had to. I mean, I, I believe I could have pulled it off. I'm glad I didn't have to find out if mm. I could pull it off on my own. I might have, I might have run off to the monastery and still be there <laughs> <laughs> I, I i um you know or because i had i look i had very somewhat reliable temptation from people very close to me going what's your malfunction bro? Right. my brothers and family were like what is your major malfunction what are you doing you own this land in the wrong, but why are you making a straight line crooked, which is the line we always use? Why are you making this complicated? Mm. Do you know how many people would dream, of dream this? to yeah. even be doing this? And so I did have that understanding, which I bring up in the book about being less impressed and more involved. I was very thankful. I was never disrespecting mm -hmm. the rom-com. I was just like, I don't know. I didn't make this up, this feeling in me. Yeah, you're in a new season. Well, I want chapter. more, and I, yeah. it, there's a new chapter to come. So I, what would I have been doing? What would I be doing now? I didn't have Camilla, and, and she, she, we didn't have our first child on the way. I, I don't know that two, that eight, that twenty months would have felt like twenty years wow. if I if I'd have stuck with it. And would I've had the patience? Would I had the fortitude? Would I've been able to stay still in the long, lonely mm. nights yeah. where I didn't feel like I had purpose, mm. where I didn't feel significant, where I didn't have a newborn child in a relationship to look at and go? Because I knew then I was like. You put time into that, you cannot go wrong. Right. I looked at my newborn child. I looked at him. I was like, you put time into this, you are in the black. Mm. You, there, there is no debit. No matter how much. You can't overdo that. Yeah. So that gave me something. If I didn't have that, mm. no, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 16 years, you said, you've been together, right? Yeah. 16 years. There's a, there's a lot of men that are driven men. I'm in LA, so I see this in LA where they... They feel like they need to be single for a long time or they need to jump from partner to partner or yeah. have multiple partners at the same time, all these different things. No judgment, no right or wrong here, but I'm curious, what have you learned about 16 years in a relationship that has taught you about 
how much more successful you can be in other areas of life yeah. versus single life when you were also extremely successful, but, yeah. but maybe there was something missing, you know, emotionally or spiritually. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback on where you first started. I don't, I've got friends that are poly and, mm -hmm. and I've got friends that are perpetually single and, uh, to see them when they do pull it off and still have a healthy spirit and a healthy body and a healthy mm -hmm. mind, I, I applaud it. I'm right on. I do, I have seen a lot of them have to, ooh, I got to recalibrate. Yeah. I got, you know, <laughs> I got I got off. I got spread too thin. Energy everywhere. You know, a bunch of little campfires, but no bonfires, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, you can do it. I think I think a person can do it on their own. I think a person can do it in solitude. I think a person can do it even with a relationship with just themselves. If you think it can be done. Um, but when you have a relationship that you're committed to, that you want to make work, that it's part of your decision, and especially when you have a child mm. that is not only you're committed to, you, is dependent on you, that goes to the top of the value system. And so career choices can go into the two hole or maybe the three hole. Mm -hmm. Now, I would argue that I got better at my career when it went to the two and three hole and wasn't in the one hole. Really? Because I didn't, and I feared this. I was like, well, I was having a family and the fact that when we had kids, my wife said, if we have kids on one condition, Matthew, when you go, we go. So my family comes with me. When she said that to me, I remember going through my mind, wait a minute. I'm an artist. I'm a lone wolf. When I go to work, I'm in my airstream all alone. It's me and my dog, maybe, but <laughs> nobody else. And as I'm saying that in my head, this other little smarter voice comes in and goes, nod your head and say, yes, ma'am. And I said, yes, <laughs> ma'am. It was the greatest decision I've ever made. Right. Because seeing my kids or leaving before they woke up and seeing them when I got home after work was, the, was a beautiful, energizing reset for me at the end of the day that mm. filled me up with real life and made me more creative Interesting. going into work the next day. To tell a child when you're doing something like True Detective and they go, what was the scene about today? And you go, I better tell a good parable because I can't tell them the real thing. It's some heavy R stuff, right? So I became a better storyteller and how I'd make it a nursery rhyme wow. or something. Um, but you're living for something, for, for, for someone else and something more. And, you know, for Camille and I living for the covenant that for her and I to do what we can to, to stay together and keep promoting the, each other and ourselves in a relationship and then to have the kids. I'm living, you're living for something else. And that empowered me and made me better as an individual. Really? And when I go out the door, I have more courage mm. because I know I've got that stability at home. Wow. Where do you think you would have been if you had been in a relationship, you know, five, 10 years prior? Yeah. And it'd be 25 years as opposed to 16. Do you think you would have been better in your career or you'd made that shift sooner? Or do you feel like you know, being, no. the, being the lone wolf, you had its time and its place. And it's I think it had its time and its place. I'm not arrogant enough to say, oh, if I go back and change time. Um, I mean, I've thought about that. I've, I, I, I was with and dated seriously some, some wonderful women before I met Camilla. Um, I think it wasn't the time for me and it wasn't the time for them, for us to take it further, mm -hmm. to take it as far as, say, getting married or something. But... It, you know, I often wonder what if, what if it was, what if I felt like it was time mm. that early? I never did. Right. What if I did? You know, do we meet the right person sometimes, but it's just not the time for us? Interesting. Do we, do, or, or is it, it it's, it's the, the two play, it's got to be the right person and the right time for each person. Yeah. But I, I, I no, I, I, I cannot go back. You know, going forward to mystery, looking back to science. Uh -huh. When I connect the dots, I don't dare to go back sure. and go, if I had changed sure. 10 years earlier, I'm thinking about who <laughs> I was dating. If we got married, I mean, who, who knows? I, 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 don't think, I don't think it would have been the same realization 10 years earlier. I was a different man. Yeah. I was, I was seeing the world differently. And we'll never know, but I, don't, I, don't, I think it was the right time for me when this happened. And my mm -hmm. single years were the right amount of time for me when I was there sure. and those relationships before that, that ultimately ended, that was the right time for them to end. So how old were you when you met your wife? We were 16, so 16 53, 40, 37. 37. So when you were 37, 
before the moment you met her. Yeah. Which I think you met her at a bar yeah. on Sunset. Club on Sunset. Sars Club on Sunset. Club. Let's call it that morning. Um, Don't go to many clubs. <laughs> Glad I went to the club this night. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Let's call it that morning or that season right before you met her. Yeah. What was it that made you feel loved yep. then? Yep. And what is it today that makes you feel the most loved today? Okay. What does it make me feel the most loved before? Yes. Better? Right. Okay. When I was spiritually strong. Mm. And look, I was, I had some relationships that were loving relationships that or I loved the woman, she loved and cared for me. Mm -hmm. And those were real. Yes. I also had a season where it was just affairs. It wasn't about love. It was lust. It's fun. Yeah. It was fun. And it was it was healthily it was a healthy, fun transaction. And we laughed and kept it light, and that was all it was ever gonna be, and we're not even, you know. And that was okay too. Mm -hmm. Um I am happy to say that through most most of that, I was able to keep somewhat spiritually strong. Really? Um, How did you and stay? Had no, and didn't really have trouble sleeping alone in my own bed. Because yeah. I've had those times, I think we all have, if yeah. we've had this single life, where there's times where if you're, if you're rolling like that, especially if it's like affairs and flirt popping around here and there, boy, all of a sudden you end up in bed alone. You can't sleep. <laughs> and you're like, whoa. Wait a minute, now I'm the company I can't stand being with? Mm. If it's only me? That would always be a trigger for me, like, you better bend a knee and go. Go inward. Catch prayer. your breath and go inward here. Yeah. So. So what made you feel the most loved before you met her? What was it? I mean. Was it the success or the, the fame? No, was it the I didn't. chase? Was it the, you know. No, it wasn't the chasing catch i knew what I, I knew what that was i that that always felt like a stop and not a stay mm -hmm. to me it was a season yeah i understood it to be a season and i gave myself freedom and license to have that season as healthily yeah. as i as, as i could um i don't think i was even more shallow right. Right. um i didn't think oh this is all there is I did have a dream where I thought where I was 80 and 88 year old bachelor, but had a lot of children. You did? Yeah. And it wasn't a nightmare. 88 year old bachelor? And you had a lot of children and that wasn't a nightmare? on a porch and it wasn't a nightmare. Really? And I woke up from that dream not going, yippee, that's what I'll do. <laughs> I did wake up with it going, that's possible. Mm. And as soon as I said, that's possible. I did quit looking so hard. And when I quit looking for her so hard, that's when she came. Mm. Because before that, I will say, in my thought of, I do want to find someone to fall in love with and start a family. I mean, every red light, bro. In LA. Possible, possible. <laughs> Produce section, you know what I mean? Possible, yeah. boss, every, you know, you just- Yoga like, class, Whole Foods, wherever you just checking, you know, everywhere. And it, it, I was looking, I was leaning in, leaning in, mm -hmm. and, and said, well, Mac, maybe that could work, like that script, well, maybe that could work, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then when I had that dream, it did, it was like, oh, on a spiritual sense, I was like, well, you might end up being an ADO bachelor. And if you've got, Spiritually, if you're spiritually strong, your relationship with God's strong, you, that's that's okay. It didn't make me go, that's what I want to do. Right. But just saying right. that could be a reality for you, let me exhale, and I quit looking everywhere at every rest. I quit looking in the first second. It was like, and I, what happens when you do that? You become more attractive. You allow yourself to be loved. You allow yourself to see mm -hmm. someone who actually you might love. But mainly you allow yourself to be someone that can be loved. Ooh, and you're yeah. not selling, you're not soliciting yourself. You're not in a rush about anything. Mm. You want to meet somebody. You also, what you look at, you want to see how they move. How far back are the shoulders? How do they talk? What do they say in between the lines? Mm. Not what they say, what do they say in between the lines? And I remember when I saw Camilla walk across the club that night, it was the way she moved. Mm. I saw history. I saw dignity. I saw somebody that was not for sale. 
I saw somebody that 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 that, that didn't need that, that when I called her over was not happy to meet me, but wasn't over the wasn't, wasn't impressed with my vocation. And she knew who I was. Wasn't impressed with that. She was about a lot more than that. So I my eyes were open mm. to seeing what I wanted and needed. And I also was able to in that moment completely be myself, not wow. oversell myself. Interesting. Not undersell myself. Did you feel like you needed to oversell yourself before then, even though you had all the success and the fame and the hits and the money and the- I think, it, I think when, just a sped, it's a sped up process, mm -hmm. you know? Especially if you're like, and you know, if, you, if it's a, a more of a string of short-term relationships, it's like, it's not overselling, it's just like, let's skip the, Let's skip a lot of the real stuff. Right, Let's right. skip a lot of the, the, the you know what I mean? I don't want to take that. Come on. We're just here. We're <laughs> laughing. We're having a good time. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and that's all. That's all we're both in this for. So, right. you know, um, so you speed up the process mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so I don't know. When you say, what did I love? It wasn't my fame. Did I, did I feel more, did I feel more loved if my movie did well and more people came up and was like, that was great? Sure. Uh -huh. Sure. But that was never my top source of feeling love. affirmation of feeling love. Um, did I feel less loved? Movie bombed, or people were like, I don't like, sure. Mm. But that was never my main thing. The the source of my lack of confidence or lack of significance. It was you know, was spiritual, and then I always had look, I always had family at this time, being my brothers and my mom and, yeah. and stuff. There was always that um, that I knew was one hundred percent reliable. Uh -huh. um, but mainly I would say spiritual. And then your follow-up question to yes. what makes you feel more loved now. Yeah, when do you feel the most loved now? Oh, the good night group hug with my three kids mm. and my, my wife mm. after we just talked about what our day was like, what we're looking forward to tomorrow. And we've had a few fun disagreements and somebody said something real honest that they didn't have the courage to say maybe a week before. And for the first time, noticed that if they shared that, they weren't going to get in trouble. Mm. That they were just going. And to see them grow and going, you got the courage. We, me and, then to feel like a dad and go, me and your mother are giving you a place to feel like you can go. We, I, I, I did like her. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it, my heart hurts because she doesn't like me. To be able to, mm. for a child to be able to say that to you, it's like, okay, we're doing something right. There we go. That's a feeling of love. To have an honest talk, not just about all of, the happy times, but about the stuff that sucks in my kids' lives as well. And even from my wife to share it and it not be like, dun, 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 dun. Right, right. To be like, yep, we're going through this. And one thing we know is we're going through it together. Mm. That, that, that's that's right. beautiful. That's, cool. that's beautiful. One of the things that you talked about it, in the book in the last couple of pages was this list of goals that you wrote down. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them. Isn't that wild? Ten goals in life, 1992. 92. One of them, becoming a father. And, and number two, finding and keeping the woman for me. The woman for me. Yep. Um, and you had ten of them. I'm curious, how important is it to write down our visions, our yep. dreams, our goals, in order to manifest what we want in our lives? Because this whole book is a, yeah. a journal of you writing down yep. everything. Yeah. And all ten of these, you, you've accomplished all of them. And you're still accomplishing yep. and living into them. Yep. So how important is it to write down our dreams, our goals, our values in order to manifest and attract them? I think it's a lot more important than we give it credit for. Look, writing things down, it seems like this old fashioned sort of archaic yeah. things. Type it. It's on a screen, put it on put it on a Word doc, save it, put it in a folder. It it can be lost back there. To actually write it with the hand. Does, is a different kind of objectivity you get. Because it's come out of you, you've put it down, now you're looking at it. It's outside of you. It's freed up now. It's alive. It's moving. Now, more so than having that goal by your bedside every night, which is can be good. But to write it down, if you're writing down true goals, they become written in your lineage. They become mm. written in your body. Whether you know it or not, in your subconscious, they just 
It's a way to get it into your subconscious, to write it down. Now it's out of me. It's on a page. I'm objectifying it now. I'm looking at it. So now I'm having a dialogue where before it was just Socratic. But now I'm having a dialogue and it starts to reciprocate. Those 10 goals, I wrote those down in the top bunk in the Delt House, University of Texas, 1992. My roommate was Monty Wills. I remember the night I wrote them down. Wow. I never looked at them again. I found those in writing this book That's and cool. found out that, oh my gosh, all 10 you actually did and, and, and four you're still doing. That's crazy. I years, never looked at them again. 30 years later, you found them. Yeah. That's crazy. But they all happened. They all happened. I don't think they happen if I don't write them down. I don't think. They do. So that practice of writing something down that you into or that you want or that you yearn for and to add to it or subtract from it along the way if you want to or just write it down, fold it up, tuck it away so you can find it 30 years later when you go want to share a journal or, or write something about it like I did. Um, I don't think it happens, but then just go back and see the invisible contract I made with mm. myself. Oh my gosh, I love that. Because obviously I did. Because I mean, I those 10... People go, you've done all 10. I said, well, no, I'm in the middle. I'm still, I have to, man I'm still maintaining for it. But yes. I have engaged. Some of them I've just done. Mm -hmm. But I have engaged, I am in full engagement with all of them. And. Well, it's an invisible contract until it becomes a, a physical written contract. Right. You know. And but I'm it's with yourself. And you I guess see, yeah, it, yeah, it becomes, course. there's an invisible way it becomes subconsciously non-negotiable with yourself. And here's the interesting thing. On this, I don't, is this the exact image or is this a recreated image? Okay. No, that's it. This is the photo of it. Or yeah. You signed it. Yeah. And that's what I think is actually really important because you did create a contract with self. R right. You signed the goals at the bottom. You have 10 goals in life, 9192. And you bottom at the bottom, you signed it. And I think that's really important in creating a, you know, uh, this contract with self is yeah. putting your name on something that you write down from the ideas in your mind into paper yeah. so that you can actualize this yeah. in life. And I think that's what's beautiful. And, and you were like, what, 20 years old when you did this? 20, 21. And, and folks, anyone who thinks so, that sounds like, you know, Mike Tyson talking about Mike Tyson when he's himself talking about the third person. <laughs> Do it. Don't worry. Sign your stuff to yourself. You know what I mean? Write, just write to yourself and sign it. Mm. It's a great thing.